Now, a few years ago, I found an island in a remote section of rainforest here on the east coast of Australia. It's surrounded by a river that's hundreds of millions of years old. And what I found was living on this island was some of the most venomous snakes in the world and lots of them. Now I survived on this island for 24 hour periods living off the land with these deadly creatures on a number of occasions. So I decided to step it up a level this time around. But first, we need to get there. Have a go at that. Wow. He's not a bad size one as well. That's so sad. I've always wanted to film a big Eastern Brown. This is the second most venomous snake in the world. We'll get him off the road so that if anything else tries to come on the road and eat him, they won't get hit by a car. All right, so now that we got the dangerous part out of the way, for the next three days, I'm gonna be surviving on Snake Island with some of the deadliest creatures on Earth. Now, I've kayaked out to this place before. I've walked out here on foot. So it's cool to bring the bike out to this place. It's gonna be good weather, so none of my clothes will get wet. But yeah, we'll be riding out in three days time if all goes to plan. So this island is home to most of the top 10 most venomous snakes in the world. So what I've brought out here with me this time is obviously a snake bite survival kit. If I was to get bitten by a highly venomous snake out here, that would save me. I bought my snorkeling gear, a knife and a fire starter and all my camera gear. And that's everything that I've taken out here this time. It's gonna be a pretty wild adventure. We're gonna get into it, start walking around straight away and see if we can find some of the most venomous snakes in the world. There's so many other cool and rare species of animals that we're gonna film over the next three days. Mate, we got three days on the island. Let's get into it and see what we can find. All right. So this beautiful snake just down in front of me here is the highly venomous red-bellied black snake. Such a gorgeous species. One of my favorites that I can find over here on this island. Almost in this exact spot, I found a big one just over that way. Probably about twice as big as this one, really fat snakes. And they have the ability to get up over two meters long. So they're not a small snake. Now the reason why he's here and the habitat that these snakes live in, anywhere you find water sources up and down the east coast of Australia, you'll find these red belly black snakes, normally in good numbers. Now these red bellies used to be in a lot better numbers back in the day here in Australia. But what happened was in 1935, there was a species of toad known as the cane toad introduced here into this country and it was actually a poisonous species it's so silly because there's no other poisonous species of frogs or toads over here in Australia so when these cane toads came in and were introduced into this country all the animals are seeing this toad for the first time thinking it's a food source eating it and then dying there was around about 100 cane toads that were originally introduced into the top end of Australia because there was something known as the cane beetle that were eating the farmer's sugar cane. And they thought that if they introduced these toads, they'd eat all the beetles, but they completely ignored them. And now over in Australia, it's estimated that there's nearly 200 million cane toads and they're still spreading across Australia. But the amazing thing about these red bellies is in the areas that the cane toads were first introduced, they've had almost a hundred years to adapt to that poison. 
Look, he's gonna go for a swim. Wow. Look at that. As I said, they're just at home in the water as they are on the land. You are so cool, mate. I'm just keeping my distance. Letting the snake do its thing. Don't want to disturb him at all. But how cool is that? Chilling with the big red belly. You watch, he's gonna go off and do his own thing right now. We're gonna let him be. But yeah, he's just crawling in that log right now. As I was saying, in places where the toads were first introduced, this species right here, the red belly, has adapted to be able to consume small toads, small amounts of poison. Now that's not saying that they can feed on them and have them as a consistent diet, but they might eat a toad, get sick, survive it and learn from it. And maybe eventually as new red bellies keep getting born, at some point they might even stop eating toads altogether and know that they're poisonous. We're gonna keep going, what a cool animal experience. He's chilling in that log. Take a look at this little fella over here. Just sitting down on the rock. We'll just creep up to him. How cool is that? All right, let me set my camera up and get a good shot of him. All right, mate, you're all good. Take a look at this big fella right here. He's beautiful. Just perched himself up on this rock right here. Now what this is, is it's the bearded dragon. Heat of the day at the moment. This guy's out here sunning himself, warming up for the day. He's got the right idea. They're cold blooded creatures. Same with all the other snakes on this island. Now this for me is actually a new species to find over here. I know that they're over here. I've got a big list of species that I have ticked off, but like this guy and the death adder and the Eastern Brown, they're all species that I wanted to find over here. So we've ticked this guy off. Hopefully death adder's next, maybe an eastern brown snake. Those two species are a lot harder to find on the island than the other ones that I have been finding over my past few trips here. But yeah, he's a gorgeous lizard. He's really chill, really calm. He's more focused on camouflaging himself than he is getting away. Two more days of this. We've already found so many cool species already. Need to find a good place to set up camp for the night. One of the pretty scary things is I've found dog footprints over here on this island. So there was wild dogs over here at some point. Whether they're still on this island or whether they've moved on, something I have to be careful of along with all these venomous animals. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my snorkeling gear out, jump in the creek and see if I can swim with any cool fish, turtles or anything. I'm gonna have to catch my own food in there later on the Savo. So try catch a big catfish or a bass, whatever's in there with my bare hands and cook it up back at the shelter. Should be pretty cool. Let's see if we can snorkel with a lungfish or something. Take a look at this big orange colored snake sitting above me in this tree right here. Now he's just sleeping at the moment. We're not gonna disturb this animal. But what this is, is it's a brown tree snake, Boiga irregularis. Now the whole Boiga family is such a cool family of snakes. And the reason why I love this family of snakes so much is the experiences that I've had with this family overseas in different countries like Borneo and Bali. The mangrove cat snake, Boiga dendropula, had such a cool experience with that guy while I was deep in the jungle of Borneo in a crocodile infested river under the full moon. I'll roll you the clip of that one. So we've just found the first mangrove cat snake, a mildly venomous species in the Boiga family up in this tree. We're above croc water at the moment. I'm gonna climb up and grab it out. But he's such a gorgeous animal. This is the snake that we were looking for. The one we wanted to find out here in Borneo. And we did it. I think you can feel the good energy, those good vibes. And you can really get a deeper connection with an animal like this. It's not saying he's not gonna bite me, but just looking into this snake's eyes right now, very powerful animal. So yeah, mangrove cat snakes, such a beautiful species. So blessed that I was able to go out there and find one of them. 
And this is pretty much the Australian version. He's kind of looking down at my head at the moment. Now also when I was over in Bali working with the Bali Reptile Rescue, rescuing big king cobras from people's backyards, we found the dog tooth cat snake, which is also in the Boiga family. I'll roll you the clip of that guy. What we found down right here is in the same family as the Boiga irregularis back in Australia. These guys are also called Boiga. They have a mild venom similar to the brown tree snakes. He's looking at me in the face at the moment. If I was to get bitten, I'd be fine. Maybe a bit of swelling around the bite site. But it's so cool to find these different snakes over here in Indonesia. Look at him. So yeah, this is the Australian version of those mangrove cat snakes. Whoa. He just whipped me in the face. But yeah, we're going to let him go. That was so cool. Now I've actually been night snorkeling in this river plenty of times before and it's the craziest thing. There are some massive Mary River cod that live in here, a protected species. We're not allowed to catch these ones, especially at this time of year. It's actually breeding season for these cod. And I've been in shallow sections of this river and seen huge lungfish. These things do get massive, up around two meters long, and the ones that size could be pushing 100 years old. Plenty of turtles, tilapia, other species in this river. But yeah, we'll see if we can find any during the day. So I was just snorkeling around in the creek and I've spotted a big lungfish sitting in the shallows up ahead of me. I'm gonna chuck the goggles back on, creep up on him, maybe walk with him for a bit, and then jump in and swim with this giant animal. So about 250 million years ago, there was a mass extinction event which supposedly wiped out 95% of marine life. These lungfish were one of the species that survived. And the reason being is because they're fully built for it. They can survive up to five years buried in the mud if there's major droughts, and they do so over in countries like Africa and even here in Australia. But in a big river like this, he'd be absolutely loving it, cruising around feeding on shrimp and small fish along with those Mary River cod they're a protected species but it's so cool to see a good population of them in remote sections of river like this and I mean I'm not sure how old that lungfish would be I'm guessing 30 years old but he could live for another 70 years they live for over a hundred years out in the wild So we haven't had rain in a long time in this area. It needs a big flush out to get that creek system going again. But I can kind of use this to my advantage to try catch food because the water levels are so low. Even though I haven't bought anything like a fishing rod or a spear or anything out here to try and catch these fish, I reckon I'll be able to grab a catfish or something if I can find one in a little pool. There's plenty of catfish and perch in this area. We'll try find one. Under this rock is a little catfish. I reckon he's legal as well. This is where it connects up to the big stream down that way. So we're gonna try grab him. Got away. Here he is. Oh, there's an eel there. There is an eel just down there. Oh, he's going mental. Oh. See the bubbles coming up? He just went under the rock. <gasps> bass right there. Big bass, or is that a perch? Sitting just under the rock. That's where the caddy was. So there's an eel, a catfish, and a bass in here. I've just blocked off that end so it can't actually get out. We're not gonna worry about the catfish or the eel. That bass is dinner, it's legal. So you can see him. He's just under that leaf right there, sitting up under those rocks. That is so cool. Now it'd be so easy to get him with the hand spear right now, but here in Australia, it's actually illegal to spear fish in fresh water. So what I'm thinking, let me take my shirt off and try to pin him with my shirt in kind of like a net up under those rocks. Maybe if I...
Oh! Got him! <laughs> yes! Take a look at that! <laughs> Australian bass! <laughs> Caught barehanded! Mate! Look at that! Take a look at that! That is a good fish! Yeah, look. You'd have to be happy with that. I reckon it's a high 30 centimeter bass taken on top water. <laughs> so obviously I didn't bring any food out here with me. So if I don't catch a fish like this, I'm not eating. That pool right there, although they can get out into the deeper section, there's an eel and a catfish in there. If I'm out here for three days, I might try to get one of them over the next three days in the second and third part of this series. All right, it's late afternoon. We're gonna cook up this bass and then find a place to set up camp tonight. Alright, so we caught a feed, found a bunch of animals. Now what we're gonna do, wait for it to get dark, find a place to set up camp, camp out here for the next three days. See you then. Massive first day over here on the island. So many cool species. Two more days left. This is my camp for the night. I've just set up in this little creek bed. There's a nice little place here that I can lay down, use my backpack as a pillow. Didn't bring a hammock, tent, or any kind of shelter out here. But yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool sleeping under the stars. Or actually under a canopy at the moment, I can't see anything. But full moon at the moment, so maybe that'll bring a couple cool animals out. I'm gonna save my torch battery for tomorrow night. I'm not gonna go for a night walk tonight, but yeah, just to know that around me in this area, and primarily at night, is when a lot of these highly venomous snakes come out and other animals too. But yeah, with the amount of footage that I got today, I'm guessing that that's part one of this three-part series. Thank you for watching part one. I'll see you all next week.